I've put together a series from an old Nick Faldo VHS golf lesson. This is video one of four, as Nick walks through his swing rebuild with his coach David Ledbetter. I hope you enjoy it. Over the previous two years working with my coach David Ledbetter, I had changed my swing completely in an effort to make myself a more consistent player. David and I spent many hours on the practice ground working on my swing. This program will enable you to learn our philosophy and see how we approach a round of golf. We traveled to southern Spain, to Valderrama, where we played the Volvo Masters, the last event on our European tour. But let's start at the beginning, and as we all know, good golf starts with a good grip. With David's help, all we're simply trying to do is unite the hands on the club, keeping the club face square. Now, as you see, David's drawn a few lines on this glove here to give you a, a better indication of exactly where we're trying to put the hands. As you can see, the left hand is pretty much a palm grip. It lies diagonally across the palm. This is indicated by these two lines here on the glove. And it's placed across the palm and through the first finger. Now, as Nick wraps yeah. his hand around here, we'll notice that the V formed by the thumb and the forefinger, the line indicated here, points very much towards his right shoulder. So very important to get that left hand position correctly on the club. And as you can see with these lines, what these indicate are that Nick can see two knuckles on his left hand. Very important for the club golfer to have at least two knuckles showing on this left hand. Yeah, I think initially, a couple of years ago, my grip was a little bit too weak. Right. And this, uh, by moving it to the left, as you can see, my thumb is directly on top. And this causes poor takeaway and bad rotation of the arm. So it's important to feel that you're just a little right of centre, nice comfortable position there. Then we ap apply the right hand. Right. Now the right hand is pretty much a finger grip and as you can see as we place the right hand on here, it lies across the base of the fingers here. The shaft lies right across the base, and wrapping the right hand on top there. You can notice the, the thumb of the left hand fits pretty much into the pad, the meaty pad of the right hand here. If we can just open this, we can see it lies right under the thumb joint here. And as Nick places his hands on the club there, there's a little gap, if we can notice, between the first finger and the second finger. This little gap is important because it helps to join the thumb and the finger together. This just keeps the pressure consistent, and now as we can see, the hands are a unit on the club. Yeah, I, f I personally feel I try to keep an even pressure all through my fingers and most, as I said, very important, keep it nice and relaxed so you, you can have this movement all the time through your swing. You've got to have freedom, you don't want to be rigid. There we go, nice and relaxed. So really to summarise, we'll, we'll see if the hands are set correctly on the club, the club face will then be squared impact. There is a choice that we have as far as where we place the little finger of the right hand. Now the most common grip, as Nick grips it, is the, what we term the overlapping or the Varden grip, where the little finger just sits on top of the index finger. This is most commonly used by most players on the tour. But there also is the other grip, the interlocking grip, which say Jack Nicklaus uses. And um, this, generally speaking, is used for people with very small hands. We recommend that for maybe juniors or ladies. And then there's the third grip, which is not very common these days, which is the two-handed or baseball grip as they term it in America where the right hand just sits beneath the left hand. Basically we're trying to get the hands working as a unit so I think the most comfortable grip is the one where the little finger just sits on top there and it just rides piggyback. We want to stress that it's it's so important to spend a little bit of time on your grip. It may feel very uncomfortable to start with. We, if you could just go out and hit a few balls each day, 20 balls, not worrying where they go get your grip in the right position, then the feel will come. And if you can do this, it's going to help your game tremendously. Having now got your grip right, the next step we've got to take is getting your, your stance, alignment and posture correct. Now the simplest way we can sort of uh, explain this is to imagine your alignment as a railway track. And the outside rail is the is your target line going through the ball to your target which we've indicated with an umbrella to make life a little easier for the camera and you are going to stand parallel on the inside track so the, the alignment is not actually pointed at the target but is parallel to your target line so let me just check this first so it's now running what I would imagine to be a little bit left to target but only fractionally which is going to get you now 
in the right position. This is the easiest way you can work on this on the practice ground. Put the club down and now we've got the base to work on which is can get our body in the right position. Now let's work from the feet up. We want a nice square stance about shoulder width apart. Not We don't be too narrow because obviously it's going to cause a lot of swaying. And the important thing with your, your toes and the feet are if you were to stand naturally, you'd be, you'd be square, so to make life easier on the follow through, we want to turn out the left foot, just a fraction to give you the freedom to let this knee work. And again, we don't want to, on the backswing, we don't want to restrict the, the turn of the right knee, so we just let that open just a little bit. Right, now we've got our feet positioned, let's go on to our body alignment. And the most important thing what we're trying to do is get every part parallel to our target line here. So we start with our knees, we want these level, but then probably the most important area is your hips. You see how I want these in line, which is going to really in the, uh, pull the shoulders into the correct position. Quite often people worry a great deal about their shoulder position, but in fact, if your hips are slightly out of line, you can see how they're pulling slightly left. That's going to automatically pull my shoulder line, again now pointing left. Obviously the other way, if we're a little bit shut, the hips are pointing to the right of target, automatically going to pull the shoulders online. It's, it's impossible to not move these two or move these two independently. So we've now got our body, as you can see, aligned correctly. Our weight distribution is, is nice and even between the feet. Now what I want you to try and do to get the right body pos posture is to just stand tall and then flex your knees, so in a nice comfortable position. And what we're trying to do is get the weight evenly down through the knees and into the balls of the feet here. So as a guide, as I look down, I've lost the vision of my laces and that sort of thing. I don't want to go too far where I can't even see my shoes. I'm here, nice comfortable position. Now the next important thing is, is tipping the waist forward. Now if we go too much from the waist, we create a, a rounded back, which is a stoop position, very difficult to turn. So where we want to actually want to bend from is from the hips again, keeping the small of our back nice and straight. We can then tip ourselves forward there into a nice comfortable position where the arms hang nice and freely. Another little guide if you're about a hand's width away from your, your left leg there, you've got your hands in a, a nice position. So there we go. There's the basics. David will now uh, run through probably some of my old faults, I think. Well, very simply, Nick used to have too much weight back on his heels here and very open with the hips there. So what we did, obviously, was propped him up to a position where yeah, the right foot was very square, so we've pointed that out a little bit there. Much easier to get your body turning in both directions if you have your feet pointed out. So what we simply did was actually get the weight further forward in Nick's stance, more towards the balls of his feet, Got his behind stuck out a little bit. You can see his back is nice and straight. If you just grip the club there, Nick. See his back is nice and straight. His chin is up too. You don't want to get your chin too low because this allows your shoulders to turn freely by having the chin up. And very important, very important, which most club golfers should really try to follow this point, the arms need to be relaxed. We cannot overstress that. Yeah. The yeah, arms need to be relaxed. You don't want to have any tension in your arms. Now we're going to move into the takeaway as it's commonly referred to, or the move away as I refer to it. Very important in getting the club moving away to make sure that things move together. Remember, we're setting things up for the rest of the swing. The golf swing is basically a chain reaction, so everything happens from here. So in moving the club away here, you'll notice how Nick moves everything away together. His middle, his navel, and the club move in one piece away together there. For the first few feet, you'll notice how everything turns together, his chest is now turning, and basically his navel is still pointing at the golf club. Now, it appears that the club face is actually open, but in actual fact, it has just simply moved with his turn. You'll notice as he, if he turns and faces the golf club right now, you you'll see that the club face in actual fact is in the same position as it was at address. So remember, staying nice and relaxed here, the body moves the club away. Rather than the hands and arms initiating everything, we try to get the body moving the club. There we go, yes. We get him here, and what we're trying to do with the weight, as David said, is resist here. We don't want any lateral movement. We don't want any swaying at all here. What we're trying to do is actually turn and let the weight feel as if it's coming backwards behind us here. Now, a simple tip, 
to make this a lot easier for you is to put the, the grip of the club right into your belly button there. Now if you cheat on it and just use your hands and arms, you can see it comes right away. So what we want you to do is turn the stomach there, and pulling it into one position. And as you can see, the club is perfectly square. I can put the club back down on the ground and I could ret retake my stance here, square. So we're not trying to roll it or fan it or take it shut in any way. We're using the body to pull it there into the right position. This also, in getting the club moving, we can see the right shoulder has started to move behind Nick. The right hip has started to move and certainly the weight has started to initiate its movement to the right side. One of the problems that Nick used to have in his golf swing was moving the club away purely with his hands and getting the club face very shut and also moving the weight to the outside of his right foot. So very important to move everything away together. So if Nick turns now and faces the golf club, he's basically in the same position as he was at address. Okay, so we can get Nick to move the club away to the first stage of the backswing. Now we're in a position really where the club continues. Simply what happens from here, the right shoulder turns, the right elbow folds, and the right wrist really hinges. So now you can see at this point here, we've got the wrist almost fully cocked when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Now as Nick continues his right shoulder turning, the weight moves into the right side, the back is facing the target, and he has wound up the big back muscles here, really coiling himself ready to come back to the ball. One great practice drill David gave me was what I would call a, a preset position, where after I've taken my address, I preset this, this wrist cock. So I, the club is parallel with the line and also parallel with the ground, so I have completed the wrist cock. I don't want to be here or too far down. Set it completely. Now simply all I do is turn my right shoulder behind me, but resisting with my right knee. I don't want anything else to fold back with it. So pulling back with the, the right shoulder. As you can see, I've completed the backswing in a perfect position. Just quickly run through that again. Set the wrists so they stay in front of me. There. Parallel and on, and on line. Now just turn the right shoulder into that position. I've resisted here. And the other very important factor is I've kept my spine straight so it keeps me in a very good position. Maybe, David, you want to run through a couple of little things on that as well? Yes, I think it'd be very important to mention here, you can notice at the top of Nick's swing there, this is one of the myths of the golf swing that we like to uncover. A lot of people try to concentrate on a straight or stiff left arm. Now, you can see Nick's left arm is fairly straight, but it is not yeah. stiff. There's no tension here. So yeah. that's something that you want to really try to work on is relaxing the left arm because remember if you get your arms too far away from your body you're putting all the emphasis on your hands and your arms and the other thing really to mention is the fact that Nick has maintained his spine angle that he had at address there you can see the angle at his waist there is exactly the same as it was at address there's no lifting or raise or dropping of that angle so as a result of that his shoulders have turned on a relatively flat plane. This is one of the things that we've changed in Nick's golf swing. He used to have a very tilted shoulder turn. Now he has a much flatter shoulder turn and is able to get the club in a much more consistent position at the top. This is something you can do uh, practicing. You can take a nine iron and just work on this setting action, turning the shoulders. And I, I want to tell you, knowing that you're getting the, the backswing in the correct position every time is great for your confidence. That's it for part one. The next video will be on the downswing as well as Nick's best golf drills. Click on this video for part two when available. I'll include links to all parts in this series in the description. Thanks for watching.